Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! So this happened to me when I was 18. I had just bought my first car about a week earlier and was driving over to my then girlfriend's house. As I was driving along the road in front of a row of terraced houses, a door opened and a kid darted out of the door. Not knowing if they were planning on stopping or not, I slammed my brakes stopping dead. The kid had turned and carried on along the pavement so apparently wasn't heading into the road. Anyway, in my sudden stopping, I really didn't care what was behind and got rear-ended. Nothing too serious, both cars drivable, just bent bumpers. The woman in the car behind was in her late 30s, came and steamed out of the car screaming that I could have killed her and her kid. She was alone in the car, so no idea where the kid came from. Being 18 and having only had my car a week, I just went right to the formalities of exchanging information. So she wouldn't even entertain that idea and kept shouting about how I better pay her for the damage and emotional distress, otherwise she will call her husband who will come and screw me up. I then pointed out that we need to exchange information and threatening me will just mean I ring the police. Mentioning the police really set her off into a tantrum about my attempted murder of her and her kid. Again, no kid there. I missed most of it because I was on the phone talking to the dispatcher. As soon as the police turned up, it instantly switched from ranting and raving to running up to the officers in floods of tears about this 18-year-old guy bullying a poor mother as her cousin her to crash. The officer spoke to us both, ran our details and wouldn't you believe it, her car had no MOT. Mandatory safety test here in the UK. That set her off screaming at the officers about them being wrong and needing to speak to the sergeant. I completed my mandatory breathalyzer and showed a whole 0.00 and the officer took down my details. Karen, however, was busy screaming at the officers that their machine was wrong and how they dare accuse her of drink driving. She got arrested for failing to provide a sample and, in the process of the arrest, got a resisting arrest tacked on. Once they got her in a van and arranged the tow for her car since she wouldn't be moving it, the officer came back and gave me all her details and said they would put mine against the lock so her insurance company could find it out but she couldn't. Her insurance paid out for all my damage, plus some medical because I was sore a few days later. I was called to be a witness in court. She got a one-year driving ban and a 500-pound fine for the failure to provide a sample and resisting arrest. So in summary, rather than provide me with her name, address and insurance carrier, she instead got arrested, banned from driving, a fine and had to provide me with her name, address and insurance carrier. Hello Reddit, this is my first time posting as well as my first Karen encounter. I am not sure if I'm posting in the right place and apologize if it's wrong. Background, my family just moved to a new bigger apartment which ended up costing a lot less than we saved, so we decided to replace all our appliances and home decor items. After a long day of unloading our storage and carrying everything up to the second floor apartment, I'm exhausted. I still had to go to Walmart to get everything my apartment needs. I was accompanied by my 10-year-old son who is a little tall for his age and looks older than he really is. That's important or later. My son and I entered Walmart which is packed and the checkout lines are so long they stretch into the clothes aisle. While my son and I are shopping, he starts playing Pokemon Go on my phone and walks behind me. We finally got everything we needed and headed to the checkout area. As I walked around looking for the shortest line, I walked past Karen, standing in the closing section, clearly not in line, but staring at the checkout area. My son and I got in line behind another customer, 10 feet away from where Karen was standing, and patiently waited for our turn. Five minutes later, my son, excited to show me a new Pokemon he caught, asks me to try to catch one. Since the line was moving slowly, I figured why not. He hands me the phone and I attempt to play the game. 
As I'm trying my second attempt to catch a Pokemon, in comes Karen. I noticed out of the corner of my eye her cart at the front side of my cart. I looked up to see Karen with her back facing me and she was peeking my way trying to be nonchalant and pretend I wasn't even there. At first I didn't say anything thinking she was looking at clothes or waiting for someone. And at this point I'm still playing the game with my son but at the same time I'm paying more attention to our surroundings and to Karen. As a customer before us moves up the line, we move forward too because at this point Karen is inching closer in between me and the customer now and she obviously thought I wasn't paying attention because she tried to push her cart in front of mine. I pushed my cart forward which blocked her way and she then proceeded to push her cart into mine. Excuse me ma'am, but we were here in line first. You were way over there when we got in line. No, I was in line before you. I was just trying to find a manager so I walked over there but this is still my spot in line. Me clearly knows she's lying. I'm sorry but that's not how it works. Even if you were in line before, you still stepped out and you were nowhere near this line when I got here and there was a manager in front of where you were standing but not once in the 20 minutes I've been in line have you said a word to anyone nor were you in any line. Everyone here is in a rush to leave too, so please wait your turn at the back of the line. How would you know? You've been looking at your phone the whole time and I was in line first. I was behind this customer in front of you first. You're the one cussing me, and if you don't move out of my way, I'll tell the manager you're cutting me in line. If you don't move, I'll have you throw Nats and banned from Walmart. Go ahead, do it, and cry me a river while you're at it, because I don't care what you say or do. You're not cutting in front of me. You know what? Screw you, witch. She then starts to walk off after trying to ram me with her car. My son steps in the way to stop her car from hitting me but gets hit in his side. Me loudly. Wow, you just hit my son with your car? You're crazy. If you can't wait in line, don't come to Walmart, Karen. Karen walks off and my son and I think it's the end of it. The customer in front of me is now at the register unloading her cart when Karen returns with a manager. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? The lady here told me you cut her in line and threatened to beat her up if she didn't shut up and leave. We don't tolerate that kind of behavior here at Walmart and I'm going to have to ask you to leave the store. The manager tells me. I looked at him and was about to explain what really happened when Karen interrupted me. Karen, looking smug thinking she won, takes it a step further. She also hit me with her cart. I want her arrested for assault. I want the police called as she assaulted me and threatened my life all because I wouldn't let her skip me. The customer in front of me that was finishing up her transaction turned around looking irritated at the lies Karen was spouting. I've waited in this line for 30 minutes to check out and at no point were you ever in line behind me nor did she ever threaten you. You threatened her and rammed your cart into hers. You threatened to have her removed and banned if she didn't let you in, then you hit her son with your cart. She was well within her rights to stand her ground. The manager, looking confused now, asked me if it was true and both my son and I said yes at the same time. I started to explain my side of what happened but Karen kept interrupting me. Lies, all lies. This dumb witch is a liar. She assaulted me. I want her arrested now. Calm down, ma'am. We will get to the bottom of this. But she cuts off the manager. No, I want her arrested now. She screamed at him. Ma'am, you're making a scene. If you don't calm down and lower your voice, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. She threatened my life and assaulted me and you're going to kick me out? I want your manager now. I am the general manager of this tour. If you want anyone above me, you'll have to call corporate. Now ma'am, I'm going to ask you one more time to calm down before I trespass you from this tour. Karen upset that she's not getting her way. So this is how you run your store. You protect violent people who attack other customers and kick out the victims. I'll have your job. Well, you're not the victim here. Her son and her are. You threatened and attacked them because you got caught skipping the line. The nice customer told her. Mind your own business, witch. No one asked you. It is my business. I witnessed everything and I will always speak out against disgusting people like you. How dare you speak to me like that, you piece of... That's enough from you. The manager told Karen. 
The manager, not wanting to deal with Karen anymore, calls the police to escort her out of the store and trespass her. And in comes a cool cop of our story. Hey sir, what seems to be the problem here? He asks the manager. Well, I have a dispute between Karen cutting off the manager with fake tears. Officer, this woman threatened my life and attacked me for no reason. I want to press charges and I want her arrested now. Officer, she's lying. She attacked my mother and me because we wouldn't let her cut us in line. Shut up. You're a pathetic excuse for a man allowing this violent mother of yours in public. Karen yells at my son. She's not violent. She's my kind, caring mother. You are the violent one who can't even watch your mouth around kids. You even hit a minor with your cart. I did no such thing. It's true, I witnessed the whole thing. The nice customer was still there and she told the cop. They are lying. I was the one attacked. Do you have footage of the incident? The cop asked the manager. Yes, I do. My loss prevention guy pulled it up as we were waiting for you to arrive. Karen starts to look nervous and starts making excuses to leave. That'll take too long and I'm in a hurry. But you insisted on the police being called. Besides, it shouldn't take more than five minutes. But I really have to go. I'm in a rush. You haven't even checked out yet and it looks to be a 20 to 30 minute wait, so there is plenty of time. But I, the cop cutting in, said, Ma'am, you are currently being detained and I can't let you leave till Karen cutting out the cop now. You can't detain me. I did nothing wrong. I have rights. Well, from what I understand, you assaulted a minor with a weapon, which is a third degree felony. But, no but. Now sit quietly while we review the video. Ten minutes later, Karen was arrested for assault of a minor in the third degree, reckless endangerment of a child, disturbing the peace, and she was trespassed from all Walmart stores. As she was escorted out the store in cuffs, she just kept yelling she never hit a minor. Her son is 10 years old and you assaulted him with your card. I suggest you use your right to remain silent because everyone has had enough with your foul mouse. The cop took statements from everyone and then took Karen away. The manager apologized for our experience and gave me and my son a $50 gift card each. It was said Karen could face 5 years in prison and a fine of $10,000 or even both. Well deserved. I'm a bit pissed and need to know if I'm overreacting here or if I'm justified. I'm a 31 female and last week my partner 30 male asked if he could use my car to go and pick up his friends from the airport. I asked him why he couldn't use his car and he said that his car was booked in for maintenance that day and mine was bigger anyway. I checked what time the flight got in, worked out that time was work and said no problem, he can take my car. This morning he gets ready and asks where the keys are. I tell him they are on a key tray and he says, no, the Ferrari keys. Background. The Ferrari is a 328 that I inherited because my dad died less than two months ago. I told him there is no way he's driving the Ferrari and he could use a Land Rover, which was what I agreed to. He says I agreed that he could drive my car and not which car specifically. I told him there was no way he was taking my dad's Ferrari and even if we've been married 10 years, I still wouldn't let him drive it. We've been together 6 months. He got pissed and said that his friends were expecting him to show up with a Ferrari and that they were excited about going for a drive in it. We got into a shouting match and I kicked him out of my apartment and told him that he's not taking the Land Rover either and he and his friends can work their own way of getting home. I went to work, took all of the keys with me and now I'm getting messages from him saying that he can't believe I didn't trust him and took all the car keys and from his mom and dad telling me that I need to go to therapy because I'm too attached to things and that my dad is gone and being possessive over his belongings is not healthy. Am I the idiot for not letting my partner use my car and am I being too emotional over this? Note, he went back to the apartment after I'd left for work to Talk things over. I was so pissed about him going through my apartment. I called security and they took my spare key from him and have his picture up as a do not allow to enter. Did I go too far? And now some comments on the post. Someone saying you're not the jerk. First, I'm sorry for your loss. Your partner is a sneaky and sensitive jerk. He didn't ask to borrow the Ferrari. He asked to borrow your car because his car was conveniently scheduled for maintenance and 
Your car was bigger. He was deliberately vague. He was lying about his car being scheduled for maintenance and saying your car was bigger led you to believe that he meant the Land Rover. He already told his friends that he was driving the Ferrari before he even asked you. You have been with him for six months and he thinks he's entitled to drive your dad's car? Not even any car but a Ferrari? Then he runs to mommy and daddy who had the nerve to tell you that you need therapy and that you need to stop being possessive of your father's things. They are all disgusting. But to answer your question, you didn't go too far. He doesn't care about you. I'm glad you got your key back and I hope this means you dumbed his sorry self. Block him and his parents. You deserve better. You're grieving and the last thing you need is a parasite trying to take advantage of you during this difficult time. Another commenter goes with, not the jerk at all. He is a jerk. Please break up with him. He's lying about coming over to talk and wanted to take the keys to your car when you were gone. You absolutely did the right thing by taking your keys and having security and not let him in anymore. His parents are also psycho for saying what they said to you. The whole family is disgusting. You don't need that in your life. A third commenter adds, Not the jerk. He wants to show off to his friends, which means he's going to drive fast because his friends want to. He wrecks it. It's on you, not him, because it's in your name. Protect your assets and never let anyone drive your cars who's not on your insurance and has their own money to cover damages, partner or not. I won't let my 22-year-old daughter's partner drive hers or my cars as long as they are under my name and insurance because of his road rage, not having a job and no motivation to get one. Dump him before you waste more of your life with this mess. So for context, I'm from Switzerland, so the gaming industry is not really the best. So I went to GameStop to get myself a 2K22. And I wanted it as a desk because I have an Xbox at my dad and my mom's house. And I can play it on any of those consoles if I have it on desk. GameStop in Switzerland only has about 5 of every new game for Xbox since PS4 is the most popular. And they really don't care about Xbox much. So I saw 2K22 and it was the very last one. I grabbed it and went to the counter with my mom's credit card which she gave me to go get the game as a birthday present. And that's when the entitled mother comes in with her 11 to 12 year old kid. The kid looks at the shelf and doesn't see 2K22 for Xbox and sees it in my hands. He then comes to me with the entitled mother after seeing him waiting for the cashier to arrive. The mom asks me if I could give her the game because she would give me an extra $25. I kindly declined and told her she could buy an Xbox gift card and buy it online. Then the cashier scanned it and I pulled out the card. Then the entitled mother, who was still behind me, started touching her back pocket, screaming, saying that I had stolen her credit card. A security guard came in and started asking me questions and called my mom. My mom had to come all the way to the store to say and prove it was her credit card. The security got her out and my grandmother insisted that we press charges on this woman. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.